Hello, and welcome to Know Your Nodes. I'm Robert Syrett, and today I'll be talking about phase modulation. I'll be doing this in two parts. We got a presentation portion, and we got a building portion. There'll be a little building in the presentation, a little presentation in the building. In the forum comments for my video on how to build a basic oscillator, it's brought up that it's not exactly clear why the phaser in the center of the oscillator goes from 0 to 2 pi. So I thought we might look at Wikipedia's article on sine and sine functions to see how mathematicians talk about phase. In fact, another name for a phaser is a phase accumulator, like it's a ramp wave that's accumulating phase. What is a sine function? You may remember from trigonometry, we're following the adventures of a hypotenuse of a right angle triangle as it travels around in a circle. So when we talk about the angle of a phase, it's in relation to this diagram. We got 90 degrees, we got 180 degrees. You can also think about the phase as a point on the circumference, which is the ratio between the radius and the circumference is going to be 2 pi. So as the hypotenuse travels around the circle, we create the sine function and the cosine function. If you aren't a fan of this particular beautiful little gif, don't worry. It's because you can also visualize a sine wave as being a turntable, you know, like for records. It's kind of rotating around and then you're watching one point on the edge as it swings by the oscilloscope. Or you can think of it as a string wrapping around a clear pole. Lots of ways that you can visualize it. And some of them are even in Audulous. Oh, this is something I wanted to point out. You, you might see that my menu here is different than just the stock one. It's because it's filled with all my personal stuff. And how can you put your personal stuff in here so you can quickly and easily build with them in Audulous? Well, I'm glad you asked. You go up to Audulous at the menu, open modules folder, and then if you're always using vias or you, every patch you have needs to have an audio output, you can put that right there at the front and you can catalog all of your weird, obscure stuff that only you would want to use. And then you can use it all the time. Okay. Back to phase. Why does the phaser go from zero to two pi? Here I've stacked a bunch of waveform meters so that we can see the full uncompressed range of the phaser node. It goes from 0 to 2 pi, and while it's discontinuous, it has exactly the right length to make the appearance of a continuous sine wave. But the sine function responds to more values than just 0 to 2 pi. And if we attach this timer node, which is a node that creates a slope, of 1, and if you send it a gate, it just resets the slope from 0 and starts all over again. All the values that you enter into the sine function will give you a corresponding value between negative 1 and positive 1. It's very forgiving in that way. It has a built-in wraparound feature. You can think of it as the slope from this timer wrapping around the circle back in the Wikipedia article. One other thing I'd like to just show you while we're here is that I'm talking about phase modulation, but the rest of the world calls it frequency modulation synthesis or FM synthesis. What I want to make clear is that they're different, but not that different. After all, if I change the frequency here, changing the, the number of hertz that this is operating at, I'll use this LFO to do that. I'm creating a ripple in this. And if I change the phase, like if I put in an offset here, so it's like, you know, 50% out of phase. Adding a fixed offset, it's just scrolling through a different portion of the sine wave function. So in effect, it's just offset the phase of the sine wave. And if I were to modulate that with a waveform, the phase offset and attenuate it a lot, it looks an awful lot like the, the frequency modulation. We're both affecting the shape of this phasor. 
but that's only with a continuous signal. If I show you the same thing, but with a square wave, you'll see why they're actually very different. This is the carrier wave, and this is the modulating wave. The carrier wave is the wave that has the modulation acted upon it. So here it is, unmodulated. This is with frequency modulation, and this is with phase modulation. When we compare this, we can see that when the modulation is high, we have more wiggles. I have doubled the frequency. This has half the frequency as this. Now, let's compare the phase modulation. And we can see there's not more wiggles at all when the phase modulation is high, because it's just an offset. We've changed from scanning this portion of the sine wave to, ch to scanning this portion. How could Yamaha make this, this conflation? Why would they say that phase modulation is frequency modulation? And there's two answers to that. One is that you're not going to get a square wave modulation on a DX7. Everything was, was sine waves. And we, when we look at the sine waves, there's a lot more similarities than there are differences. I mean, this is obviously not this. But when we hold it over the modulating, during the rising portion of the, so, uh, the sine wave, we get a, a compression of the signal. During the falling portion of the sine waves, we get an expansion. Compared to the phase modulation, we see the same compression during the rising, and expansion during the falling. You'll take my word for it when I say that with a little mathematical finagling of the numbers, you can make this look like this. And the other thing I wanted to say is that these are the same period, and that's because these two things are at a specific ratio. Phase modulation FM synthesis is all about ratios of frequency. So that part is going to stay the same. That more or less concludes the presentation portion. I hope that you have a clearer idea of phase and how it works in Audulous 3. Now let's see how we can make it work for you. I have prepared it a little bit just so that this video isn't half an hour long. We have our phaser. It's at the core of our oscillator. I've scaled it down to go from zero to one. And I'm gonna use the fract function again for our phase modulation. Fract function wraps around. You can think of it like a room with two doors in it on the opposite side and you exit one door and you enter from the, into the same room from the opposite side. So if I enter in point one, it returns a value of point one. But if I go the opposite direction in the negative uh, domain, minus point one goes back to one and then down the same amount. So it's point nine. Quickly, let's visualize that with this bipolar triangle wave. It goes up to one, down to negative one. As it crosses through zero, it goes back up to one. And that, even though it looks discontinuous, it's gonna make continuous modulations to our sine wave. And more importantly, to all the other functions that aren't sine waves. Remember I said that the sine wave is very forgiving? The uh, algorithms I created for the other ones, they really only work within the, the confines of zero to one modulation. Let me just make a little level here. Let's see, as so we bring that up a little bit. Just a little bit of modulation, even though if we look at it separately, They create a new unique shape. Okay, so let's let's dust off our basic oscillator and see how we can modify it so we can have control over the phase modulation. There it is. Let's uh, dive inside and take a quick overview of where things are in this oscillator. We have our one per octave signal being converted into hertz. 
this is where we're going to put the ratio. And then we have it going into a via labeled 0 to 2 pi. So all of these things are expecting 0 to 2 pi signals. Now the fract function works between 0 and 1, only between 0 and 1. So we're going to move this scaling expression, which takes 0 to 2 pi down to 0 to 1, and move it to the other side of the via. And this is no longer 0 to 2 pi. It's going to be 0 to 1. So this one is going to have to change. Because we're dividing by 2 pi before the via, we're going to have to multiply by 2 pi inside of the sine function. And it looks like we'll also have to change from pi to 0.5 in this expression. Now with the ratio, we're just going to add a molt. And we're going to have an input. We're going to call it ratio. With the zero input, this is going to output zero frequencies. So when I finish rearranging this uh, oscillator, I'm going to have to put a one into this input for it to make the normal output. And believe it or not, that's OK. This seems like a good place to put the fract function. Fract of x plus phase, close paren. Very nice expression node, has a little separate input for us. And we'll put an input here and call it phase. We get back out. We'll see that new elements that we have added that are going to be placed into our design are just kind of stacked up on the spawn point. Because when we were making this module, we moved all the elements away from the spawn point. It's not in the middle of the module. It's kind of above and to the left. OK, let's edit the interface, move this knob down, have a ratio and a phase, or eh, maybe a phase and a ratio. I guess it doesn't really matter. Lock. Ratio of 1. Hey, I remembered this time. And let's look at our beautiful waveforms. Isn't that fun? Okay, now let's see the modulate. Because I'm going to have everything uh, run off of the same frequency knob, I'm going to put a via here. And maybe a via on the sync input as well. Have a MIDI trigger go to the sync input. There we go. We can restart the waveform as many times as we like. And let's create a duplicate. This is going to be our carrier. Let's make a modulator. Oops. Copy and paste and move this over here. Sine wave. Oh, let's have a level. Attenuating this signal is actually a pretty important part of phase modulation. It's called the modulation index. Let's synchronize these oscillators. And here we go. Increasing the phase modulation. Isn't that beautiful? It's like you get the soft version with the sine, the sharper uh, version with the triangle, and then two really abstract out there kind of shapes. Uh, there is one thing I wanted to show you though. So suppose that you forgot to enter a ratio for the carrier. It's actually not gonna be totally useless. You can use the carrier as a wave shaper. The sine wave 
will become kind of like a softly folded sine wave. The triangle wave will have these really creased edges, whereas these continue to just be interesting freeform designs. Oh, and let's actually listen to stuff. Let me make an audio output. This is actually a library module. I'll show you how to make one of these at some point. Now let's move it up to a frequency that we can hear. So that's wave folding. Here's a ratio of one. Ratio of one. A ratio of two. A ratio of three. Now, as uh, devastating as this may be, one, two, and three are your most useful ratios. Uh, they give you a sawtooth-like wave, a square-type wave, and a string-type wave when you're using sine waves. Everything else is just kind of higher-order harmonics and fun dissonant stuff. Like if you choose like a really just odd value, listen to that. <laughs> it really just sounds very wacky. And similarly, if you use other waveforms that aren't continuous, you'll, you get a lot of aliasing, especially with the discontinuous waveforms like the pulse wave and the sawtooth wave. Good stuff. Uh, and that's more or less it. Please join me in the Audulous forums where you can make a request about what I'll make next. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to do it in any particular order, but I would also like to cover making clocks, step sequencers, and just making your first patch in Audula so it makes a beep or a sound. Maybe a step back from all this more technical, theoretical stuff. Um, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And support me on Patreon, even though I don't have a Patreon yet. Maybe one day I will. Maybe by the time you're watching this, I'll have a Patreon. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye.